Um, I have a question. How many times have just random ass cis white men been considered the victim after a shooting when we go like, oh, we need to solve the mental health problem in the United States? That's looking at the shooter like a victim. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's what that is. Let's go ahead and get into this thread. I'm going to go ahead and give people a warning. This is a very, very, very unhinged thread of just terrible takes when it comes to trans people. But I did want to cover it because it's, it's basically like everything that a right winger could possibly freak out about when it comes to like trans people or wokeness. It, it's all of it kind of wrapped into a single thread. So I figured it's probably a good idea for us to go over it because, you know, why not just a little bit of everything? All of the time. But first, let's get into the fan art. And... And... God, I'm so disappointed. I'm, I'm so disappointed in all of you. Every fucking one of you. Every... Every one of you. I am saddened by. Consummately. This one is from Mr. Stoffelis. And I... I'm tired of it. I have seen the porn with this version of my character, and I am not impressed. I am only sad. The next one we have is from Tales of Atonement. Still not finished with this one, but long story short, I was commissioning a picture of my original paladin OC, who's a brunette with glasses and heterochromia, and wields a hammer and is polyamorous with his wife. So the artist asked me if I was you. I told him I wasn't, but that I knew who you were, so we collaborated to turn my commission into a fan art with our two OCs, except that they traded hammers. And we gave Cirrus some Tales of Atonement style power armor. Aw, okay. Well, I appreciate it. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you would like your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. With that all said, let's go ahead and get right into... Uh, well, you know what it is. You know what it is. <clears throat> Women's sports have been increasingly dominated by testosterone ridden male, ridden male athletes who failed to make the cut in men's sports. There's an effort underway to stop mixing trans women into women's sports and vice versa for men's sports. I wonder what happens if we look at Scientific American. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's weird. That's a weird title. That's a weird title. Huh. That's a strange one. Source. I made it the fuck up, Jack. In February 22, uh, or 2020, or how, how far does this go? How far does this go? Let's see here. da 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 da, -da. In February of 2020, the families of three cisgender girls filed a federal lawsuit against the Connecticut, Connecticut Association of Schools, the nonprofit Connecticut, Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference, and several boards of education in the state. The families were upset that transgender girls were competing against the cisgender girls in the high school track leagues. They argued that transgender girls have an unfair advantage in high school sports and should be forced to play on the girls' team. Conservatives around the country have jumped on the question. Attorney General Merrick Garland was pressed on the issue during his confirmation last month. State legislators around the country are pushing bills that would force trans girls to compete on boys' teams. In describing the Connecticut case to the Wall Street Journal, uh, opinion writer Abigail Schreer expressed a representative argument. When transgender girls compete on spur uh, girls' sport teams, cis girls can't win. The opinion piece left out the fact that two days after the Connecticut lawsuit was filed, one of the girls beat one of the transgender girls named in the lawsuit in a Connecticut state championship. It turns out that when transgender girls play on sports teams, cisgender girls can win. In fact, the vast majority of female athletes are cisgender and are the vast majority of winners. There is no epidemic of transgender girls dominating female sports. Attempts to force transgender girls to play on the boys' team are unconscionable attacks on an already marginalized transgender chil uh, children, and they don't address the real problem. 
They're unscientific, and they would cause mental health damage to both cisgender and transgender youth. We could go on in the article, but I think that's basically all as far as we need to go there, right? That's as far as we need to go there. We don't have an epidemic of this happening, and cis girls still beat trans girls. It's not like you put a trans girl into there and suddenly they just win. There's already unfairness in genetics in sports. This is why we get basketball players who are tall. Similarly, men's sports shouldn't be mixed with trans women. There's uh, not much of this problem currently, since men are physically stronger and faster than women. But you get the point. You know, except for the times when women win still. Said here, let's see, uh, wokeness has been hitting so high due to liberal left politics these days. A lot of corporate sponsors for trans, tons of corporate ads for trans folks, literally from eight clinics in the entire USA in the 1990s to 300 plus major pediatric gender affirming clinics in 2023. Y you mean the thing that happens when we understand that a treatment is needed for more people? You mean an industry expands to meet the needs of people? That seems pretty normal. Democrat versus Republican woman. Republican woman, Democrat woman. So, First of all, I'm just going to say this. I'm not attracted to Dylan Mulvaney. I'm not. I'm really not. She is not my ideal look when it comes to women. That does not mean that there are not, quote, Democrat women who don't fit that description. There are even, quote, Democrat women who are trans who meet that description, who would be considered very attractive. This is literally just going like, ah, yes, Republican is when cis woman and Democrat is when trans woman. Ignoring the fact that that's really not the case, generally speaking. And, and there are people who can find Dylan cute. If you find Dylan cute, cool. I personally don't, but that doesn't really matter. All that matters here is the meme is stupid. Go woke, go broke. Ah, yes. Ulta, Bud Light, and Jack Daniels notoriously places that have seen their revenue drop substantially and will not recover immediately afterwards. So what's funny is like specifically with Bud Light, when you look at the here, let me go ahead and pull it up because they did receive a, uh, they did get a drop in their stock, right? They did get a drop in their stock. I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that there was a drop in their stock. Shut the fuck. Okay. Right. We had the Dylan Mulvaney thing happen, and there was, like, a little dip. But if you look at their stock over the course of... Let's see here. That's one day. I want to see their three-month their three month run. The dip that people have been talking about with Dylan Mulvaney, there was a steady rise, and then what? Like, this dip happened right here? The Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light thing happened, and then, like, this dip happened? But... That dip, even at its lowest bit, isn't as low as Bud Light normally sits. Like, $5 is a pretty significant drop for a stock, but they're not even getting 5 That's like a $2 drop compared to being $5 lower in, like, the last set of months. Hell, they pretty consistently sit in the $58 to $61 range, and then the viral ad campaign happens and there's a little dip and then things are starting to stabilize again. But the area they're stabilizing in is still higher than, than Anheuser-Busch's normal average. But yeah, definitely go, well, go broke. It's funny when actual data shows that you're fucking wrong. Trans privilege is not a privilege. Wake up. The ability to murder six people, including three children and still be the victim. Um, I have a question. How many times have just random ass cis white men been considered the victim after a shooting when we go like, oh, we need to solve the mental health problem in the United States? That's looking at the shooter like a victim. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's what that is. So either that is looking at this uh, at them like a victim and therefore we look at a lot of shooters like victims of society that end up doing terrible things. Or alternatively, if you want to bite the bullet that that's not looking at them like a victim, then this isn't looking at somebody like a victim. Also, I like that the the account here is Deep Blue Crypto. They're there for truth, liberty, uh, freedom, rights, humor. Well, their entire page is a joke, so I guess the humor is there. This is disgusting and an abomination to women's sports. 
than a biological man fractured a woman's skull. We used to call uh, this violence against women. Now we call it a victory for trans rights. It's a fucking fighting arena. It's a fighting arena. Wait, what? They're in an arena where they're supposed to be fighting. Injuries happen all the time. Trans women and women's sports is just boys beating up on girls. For this to be your take, you have to be a fucking misogynist that believes that men are inherently, like, dominant over women in general. Jesus Christ. So, uh, this is from 2024 and Between Two Women. Like, wait, was, was the person not even actually trans? Was this actually like is is that what is that what happened here? So no, from what I remember, hold on, hold on, really? So 2014. Skull and MMA fight. Do 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 do. Let's see here. Okay, so that's... You know what's funny? You know what's funny? So there's a quote here from Ronda Rousey. I could knock out anyone in the world. I feel like if you go through puberty as a man, it's not something you can reverse. There's no one do button on all of that. So technically, technically speaking, there are some things that are not reversible when it comes to male puberty. You know what that means, though? We should be advocating for, you know, puberty blockers. Like, I like that these solutions to the problems of, quote, trans people in sports can basically be solved by gender affirming care. Like, gender affirming care actually solves that problem. Uh, also, it shows here that, yes, uh, in this case, this was transgender MMA Fallon Fox, and Fallon Fox is MTF trans. So, no, this is this one was not misinfo. Fallon Fox was actually trans. Um, but again, like, the solution to that, the solution to all of that is just gender-affirming care. If we have puberty blockers earlier in life, not earlier than medically recommended, mind you, earlier in life than Republicans want it to be uh, available, then we basically solve the problem of, oh, well, they went through a male puberty. You can make it to where they just never go through the male puberty. Said, wow, it's a perfect moon for a werewolf to come out. Werewolf comes out and says, I'm gay. What is that supposed to even mean? What is that? What does that matter? A huge difference between a male and a transgender ballerina is she was still accepted into the Royal Ballet Academy. Okay, this is missing a lot of context, though. This is missing a lot of context. No woman has a penis, no man has a vagina, non-binary is nonsense, and transitioning uh, children is profound abuse. That's from who? No man has a vagina! Why does she look like Rita Skeeter? Why does this- why does this girl look like Rita fucking Skeeter? Well, we can agree that transitioning children is profound abuse. Good thing nobody's fucking doing that. Said Rita Skeeter gets tomatoed. But like, a, no woman has a penis, no man has a vagina, non-binary is nonsense. That's not actually a, that's, that's a series of statements, but there's no actual argument that's made there. If we understand woman to be a social category, just as we understand men to be a social category, then the genitals need not matter. Not to mention, there are intersex people who, for instance, will have a vagina and also a penis. What are they? Like, wh where do they sit in your categorization of people? Said, hey, it's the person that wouldn't denounce Nazis in her rally. Yeah, weird that. I'm sure there were fine people on both sides. Said, I use gender neutral programs, uh, pronouns. What do the middle two letters spell? Said, no. Pronouns, middle two letters spell no. Trans person gets mad because you deliberately want to misgender them. I I don't I don't see how it's funny. Like, if your entire 
humor set. If the only way you know how to communicate with people is making them angry, you only know how to get big emotional reactions out of them. What fucking use are you outside of being on a stage as a clown? Said, pardon my French, what the fuck is even going on with people these days? Said, mother and son are becoming father and daughter. What's wrong with that? We live in a world now where more people realize that they might be trans and that's okay. And they're literally just showing the pictures from back when, back when they hadn't figured that out yet. So he transitioned, she transitioned. What's wrong? I don't see the actual issue here. 7.2% of U.S. adults identify as LGBT. In a, it's 7.2% of U.S. adults identifying as LGBT. The trend keeps increasing, which will ten, uh, trend to 10% soon. Woke indoctrination in schools isn't helping contain this trend at all. So here's the question. Why would you need to contain the trend? You first need to make the argument that the trend is bad. That there's a reason to contain it. That there's a reason to lower it. That we should have fewer transgender people or fewer gay people or fewer whatever the fuck. But it's funny. Have you noticed then that because it's the younger generation, because it's the younger generation that are identifying more, what we can gather from that is that people who grow up in a world that is more affirming for people who are gay, people who are trans, people who are really anything on the LGBTQ chart, if you grow up in a world where those things are more accepted, the likelihood that you'll identify with those things instead of staying in the closet is higher. There's a reason we have that, like, traditional family meme that has the, like, Iva, like, the, the woman goes, like, I've never felt an orgasm from my husband, and the husband goes, like, I'm secretly gay. And just, like, it's, like, all of the hidden things that the family refuses to talk about. If you've ever seen that meme, it's it's wonderful. There's a reason we have that meme. There's a reason it exists. Because people who grow up in a world that is hostile to people who are trans, people who are gay, etc., they tend to stay in the closet or just not consider those options at all. Think of it this way. Think of it this way. Let's say that you grew up being attracted to women all of the time. Like, that's the only thing you've ever been attracted to. And then suddenly, suddenly, there is a guy who you start developing feelings for, and you don't know what to do. And you're in your 30s. You don't know what the fuck to do here. You have no idea. You've lived three decades as straight. But there's that one person who manages to somehow, magically, tick enough boxes that you're like, oh, wait a minute, I, I actually am attracted to this person. And you're sitting there running through all the scenarios like, could I see myself being with this person long term? Am I going to be able to, uh, is it going to be a thing where I'm just going to have to suck it up and adapt? Or is it a thing where I'm going to be able to actually live with the idea of kissing this person, having sex with this person, being with this person? And it's a scary thought. It's a really hard thing to wrap your head around when the norm for you for years has been straight, good, gay, bad. A lot of people in chat are saying, like, this has happened to a friend of mine that's the uh, the bi awakening. Like, they've... This is, a, this is a phenomenon that a lot of people have seen. We're like, there's that one person that makes them go, oh. And it's, and it's not just a thing. It's not just a thing with people who are straight that realize that, like, oh, maybe they're bi. There's even people who have, like, identified their entire lives as gay or as lesbian. And there's a person who's of the opposite gender who ticks all of their boxes and they're like, whoa, why? Like, it's a, it's a weird phenomenon, but it can happen to anybody. It's just, as a cis person, you get to experience that phenomenon in a world that largely caters to cis straight people in general. So it becomes a doubly scary thing. Not only is there an aspect of your identity you're wrestling with, but there's an aspect of society's response to that, that you're dealing with, your family's response to that. When people grow up in a world that is more affirming to people questioning that stuff about themselves, they're more likely to come out of that closet. They're more likely to figure out that, oh, it's okay. It's okay for me to be X, Y, or Z instead of being just it's okay.
it's hard for a lot of people to wrap their heads around, but it's not unheard of. And again, it's fine to just be you. Eventually, sometimes you, you start settling on, oh, the labels don't matter. Who I love is who I love. So long as the person is, you know, a consenting adult. Which is something that I shouldn't have to say as a qualifier, but there are a bunch of idiots from Young Ripa's audience that apparently think that uh, I don't know that. Because saying that trans kids exist is all this required to call somebody a pedophile on the internet. Apparently. Said uh, Riley Gaines ambushed and physically hit after saving women's sports speech at San Francisco State University. She was apparently hit multiple times by a guy in a dress. Trans women, woman attacking a woman for speaking up about saving women's sports. Let's see here. I feel like, I feel like Riley Gaines might have done more than just speaking up about women's rights. Let's see here. Who is Riley Gaines? Who is this? Said, let them project. Hello, Coors meme. Also, somebody just got their rally done. Thank you very much. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Who's a former D1 swimmer who was attacked and harassed by a mob at San Francisco State University while speaking out in support of women's rights. That feels different than a single guy in a dress. Let's, let's go ahead and take a look and read that article. Let's take a moment here. I, I, man, I don't know how to read any of that. I don't know. There's the Fox News version. There's her own personal t uh, website. Let's go here. Let's go here. Former NCAA swimmer Riley Gaines says she was assaulted Thursday on the campus of San Francisco State University. Gaines was at the school to speak about her views opposing the inclusion of transgender athletes in women's sports, according to the event announcement. Said, I was physically assaulted by one person. I was struck twice, both times hitting my shoulder, with the second one hitting my face. The rest of the protesters just ambushed and cornered me uh, before I was able to move out with the help of campus police. Okay, that bridges the stories together. That bridges the stories together. A video of Gaines posted from the event showed her moving quickly while surrounded by security officers. A protester can be heard shouting trans rights or human rights, but the video is shaky and does not appear to show an assault so wait is there no is there no evidence of this we're conducting an ongoing investigation into the situation there were no arrests related to the event the university police department said in a statement the disruption occurred after the conclusion of the event which made it ne necessary for upd officers to move the event speaker from the room to a different safe location they didn't immediately respond to an inquiry by cnn by the on the nature of the disruption gains tied transgender swimmer she tied Leah Thomas for for fifth place. They tied for fifth place. They they tied for fifth place. And that's what? That's what she's pissed about? Bitch, you're not even getting a bronze medal. Sit down. Jesus Christ. Tied transgender swimmer Leah Thomas for fifth place in the 200 meter freestyle and has been vocal about her opposition to the inclusion of trans women and women swimming. So four cis women beat Leah Thomas, and you tied with her, and you were so desperate for that fifth place position. Jesus Christ. Apparently, it's an appalling attack on free speech on a college campus. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said on Twitter, House Republicans stand with Riley Gaines. Of course they do. A uh, literary free expression advocacy organization called the Incident of Disaster. Physical intimidation and violence is never acceptable response to speech. Uh, I actually disagree. If somebody uses speech to call for genocide, I believe that physical intimidation and violence is an acceptable response to speech. That's just me. Maybe, maybe we just learned a couple of different things from World War II. Who knows? Who knows? Gaines appearance organized by Turning Point USA. So if we don't have video evidence of the assault, but there was video evidence of everything else. And she, and she wasn't even complaining about, like, losing first place. It's fifth place. Who the fuck cares about fifth place? Goddamn fucking Republican snowflakes and their participation trophies. Can you imagine needing a participation trophy that fucking badly? What actual fucking children? But okay. 
I can't prove she's never run into that, but I spent a lot of time progressive faces without hearing it. Like, here's the thing. I don't doubt that it's possible. I don't doubt that it's possible that it happened. But if we don't have evidence of the thing happening, and on top of that, she's complaining about functionally a, a non-issue. You tied for fifth place. Holy shit. Calling all mediocre males to join women's championships and win them all, ruining theirs. Again, not a thing that happens at a statistically significant amount, but okay. Women, beauty, healthy, stunning, and brave. Well, let's go ahead and go through each of these. Is Dylan Mulvaney a woman? Probably. Who knows? Uh, is Lizzo beautiful? To somebody? Sure. Uh, is this person healthy? I don't know. I'm not their doctor. Is this person stunning and brave? I mean, in today's society, coming out as trans? Not really the safest thing to do. So, sure. It, there you go. There's my response to every one of those. Also, how's it going, Haku? But you know, like... Eh? Mutilating minors, erasing women, destroying female sports! It wasn't part of the deal! Just go ahead and get that... Just get that scream... Get that me metal scream voice going. Mutilating minors, erasing women! <laughs> Just go through the whole thing like that. It wasn't part of the deal. I don't. I don't care. It's the LGB Alliance trying to do their anti-trans shit. It's the it's the LGB Alliance doing their anti-trans shit. I'm sorry, but nobody's mutilating minors. Nobody's erasing women's, and none of you gave a fuck about female sports. I guarantee you, until throwing trans people under the bus was a thing you got to do here. Retsuko, Alex Jones, they're turning the frogs gay! <laughs> so I want to sample that voice clip, then do it. Then do it. North Dakota Governor signs ban on trans athletes joining female sports teams in K-12. So here's the thing. In K-12, I think that the rule should be, if you really want to have the, like, puberty matters conversation, in K-12... If you want a safe rule, then if the trans kid is on puberty blockers, then they are allowed to participate in whatever their identity is because they have not gained any of these significant advantages that puberty would have allowed them. If you do not allow puberty blockers, then that's your own fucking problem. Sort your state out. So why Gen Z aren't proud to be Americans and why they're turning to LGBTQ plus trans and climate cults for identity... That it's from fucking Fox News. Why would I why would I care? Me just trying to live my life trans propaganda? Does does trans people existing as happy? Is that propaganda? Is that propaganda? Can can you can you show me where on the doll the trans propaganda touched you? I'm the victim of hate speech. That's not what hate speech is. Well, I hated it a lot, okay. I mean, I'd find the meme funny if it wasn't showing again just Something that doesn't really happen that much. There are snowflakes on the internet on both sides of the aisle. I'm 100% willing to admit that. I just called Republican snowflakes earlier, and there are some people on the left who are really, really tender and need to realize that here on the internet, we have thick skin. We have to, to exist on the internet. But at the end of this whole thread, I'm not finding this anything but disingenuous as shit. So they knew what a woman was then. They knew what a woman is now. Your politicians and your woke leftist establishment are trying to take advantage of the situation. Creating a confusion among confused younger generations. Trans people aren't confused. They're not confused. The confusion happens when there's a society that does not accept them and they have to decide whether it is better for them to live depressed and pretend they're cis or live happy and get assaulted. I'm not transphobic, but I am when my date reveals to be a trans woman. I'm not okay with this one. I'm super not okay with this one. And the reason for that, very, very simply, is due to this lovely little thing called the trans panic defense. Now, I'm of the opinion that if 
the intention is for you and another person to sleep with each other, then a conversation about what genitalia is there is a reasonable conversation to have. However, if you're just going on a date with somebody and your date reveals that they're trans, why would you immediately resort to transphobia? Why would you do that? That doesn't make any fucking sense. But also, the reason I'm not okay with this meme 110% of the time is because we have this lovely little thing called the trans panic defense in the United States. Now, what this means is in a majority of the states in the U.S., uh, if you find yourself in the bed of a trans person and you assault them, a common refrain in court is trans panic. Oh, you were afflicted by the vapors. You had no idea they were trans. And then as soon as it was revealed to you in bed in your most vulnerable of moments, you were taken and smitten with the idiocy of Satan or some shit, and you just had to attack them. It's a defense that has been used in court a multitude of times. It's fucking dumb. But it is a legal defense that is used all of the time in court when a trans person goes on a date with somebody who turns out to be transphobic. While on the one hand, while on the one hand, yeah, you, if you plan on sleeping with somebody, you should maybe have conversations about when was the last time that you were tested? Or, hey, what type of things do you enjoy being done to you? Like, little conversations, little open conversations that could let you know, you know, genitalia-type things before you sleep with each other. That does not mean that there is an excuse ever for getting violent with somebody when their genitalia is not quite what you thought it was going to be. You may be with somebody who's intersex, and their genitalia is the only thing that they've ever known. They have no idea, in a lot of cases, that, hey, that's not what everybody sees all the time. That can cause you to think, stupidly, that you can now attack them. You can't, and you shouldn't. He said, why I just don't date? Like, I don't... <sighs> I don't understand why physical assault is the first thing somebody thinks about doing here. I don't. Hold on a second. Nobody should engage in physical assault on another person. Especially not when it's like, they were revealed to be trans, so now you're angry. No, they are revealed to be trans, so now you make a decision over whether or not you're going to be exploratory or if you're going to be masturbating tonight. Said, I don't date out outside of other trans people. It's just not safe to do. Said, you made me sleep with a guy and I'm not gay. My masculinity is now insulted. I mean, that's the that's the logic. People in America, did you just insult my culture? I'm 5% Italian. People in Europe, I hate you. Me too. This one is... Te there's there's actually a little bit of truth to this one. Um, in, in it, we, we do have a lot, of, a lot more sensitivity in America than a lot of European cultures do. This one I'm willing to actually, like, lend a little bit. Because... Having having had a lot of friends in Europe, this one I have seen. But everything else here. Here's what they. If you want to be transgender, I don't even fucking have a problem with that, and nobody else does. Nobody cares. Yes, they. Yes, they do. Don't fucking lie. Don't do the whole nobody cares if you're trans. If nobody cares if you're trans, then I would like to point you to Michael Knowles, to Matt Walsh, to Ben Shapiro, people who routinely have a problem with people being trans. People who have a lot of influence who have a problem with people being trans. Here's what they care about. You shoving it in everybody's fucking face everywhere they fucking look. Say yeah, there's nothing wrong with people being proud of being trans. Fucking deal with it. Saying that you're, you're the most protected class of society and you're saying you're the most villainized. Well, the reason. Michael Knowles literally called for the genocide of trans people. They are one of the most villainized people in society right now in America. The reason you're getting heat now is because now motherfuckers are getting to the point where they're running into schools and killing people because of the perceived hate that they're getting, when in reality, you wouldn't even get the hate if you just leave the kids alone. Ah, so we're just... blaming... I told you this would happen. The Nashville shooter thing happens, and now all of a sudden, uh, it's a trans problem? That school shootings happen because of trans people now? 
I fucking told you guys. Fucking told you guys. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Oh, there's the end here. There's the end here. There's Riley Gaines perfectly explaining the transactivist movement. I'm sorry. I'm not... I don't care, nor am I going to listen at this point. This is somebody with way too much time on their hands just spreading hate on the internet. I mean, granted, that's what gets engagement on Twitter. Let's be fair. But, still. So if you wanted a summation of pretty much all of the anti-trans arguments all thrown into a single thread, congratulations! We found it! And now I'm gonna go measure the depth of drywall with my forehead. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, everybody, insert into video tagline here.